Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Organix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about audio buses. But before I do get into that, I just do want to say that recently I have published a new short horror game on Itch.io. It's actually got eight different endings since there's a bunch of different things you can do in the game. So uh, yeah, if you want to go try it out, be sure to. It's a pretty short little silly game. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like it. It's free as well, so there's no cost to it either, and uh, yeah. So as I just said before, today I'm going to be teaching you guys about audio buses in Godot. So you might be thinking to yourself, what are audio buses? Well, to put it simply, audio buses are basically like a way to categorize your sounds in Godot. So let's say, for example, you want to have your dialogue, sound effects, and your music volume all separated from each other, because you might want to have settings in your game where you can change your master volume, your sound effects, dialogue, and music volume, and you want to change it separately from each other. Well, how you do that is via audio buses, because it's a way to categorize your sounds all from each other. So what we're going to be doing is um, when you are in your Godot project, uh, down the bottom of your uh, project window, you should see like an audio tab here. You want to click on this. And then what that will do is that will bring up this uh, audio bus layout here. So as you can see, we have our master bus. And then we can actually add some new buses if we want to as well. So let's say, for example, you want to have a music, dialogue, and sound effects bus. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three new buses. So I'm going to go add bus, add bus, and add bus. And then I'm going to rename these. So we're going to have dialogue. And then we'll have sound effects. And then music. And there we go. Alrighty, so now that we've got our audio buses created, now what I want to do is I want to show you guys an example of how they work. So what I'm going to do is in this empty scene here, I'm going to create a new audio stream player. Just going to add that to our scene. And then as you can see, when we've got our audio stream player selected, to our right and our inspector menu, we've got our audio stream player's properties. And then towards the bottom here, we've actually got a property for our audio bus. And if you select this drop down menu, you'll be able to see uh, the master audio bus, which is the default audio bus, which all audio stream players are assigned to by default. And then if you've created other audio buses like we have in this project, for example, with the dialogue, sound effects, and music audio buses, uh, you should be able to see them in your drop down menu as well. So with this audio stream player, I'm going to assign this to the dialogue audio bus. And then I want to duplicate these other audio stream players by pressing Ctrl D twice. Uh, so then we can actually get two different audio stream players here. And now I'm going to assign these to the sound effects and music audio bus. And by the way, I just do want to make it clear as well that you can assign however many audio stream players you want to the different audio buses. Like if you've got all sorts of different sound effects in your scene, for example, you can assign all them sound effects to your sound effects audio bus. And then if you change the volume of your sound effects audio bus, uh, what that will do then is then, well, it will change the volume of all your sound effects in your scene because, well, they're all categorized underneath the sound effects audio bus. And then same thing with your music and dialogue as well. Alrighty, so now that we've got our audio stream players here assigned to the audio buses that we've got in our project, what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to assign sounds to the audio stream players. So as you can see here in my project folder, I've got a sounds folder and it's got three example songs that I've actually gotten from my game Bodian Friends that I made not long ago. So these songs will be used as example sounds today for this tutorial. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to assign each of these sounds to the audio stream players. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So first off with the first audio stream player, I'm going to assign Bodhi's Darkness to that. And then with audio stream player 2, I'm going to assign burn zone P1. And then with audio stream player 3, I'm going to assign friend battle charm. And there we go. So if you do want to know what these songs sound like, I will play a couple seconds of each, just so you guys uh, do know what they do each sound like. So I will do that right now. So that there is Bodhi's Darkness, and then we've got Burn Zone P1. And 
And then we've got friend battle charm. So yeah, that's what those three songs sound like. Alrighty, so now that we have our audio stream players, audio buses, and sounds assigned, now what we can do is we can finally test out the audio bus volumes. So how we're going to do that is, as you can see here with the audio stream players, there is a bull here called playing, and if we tick this as true, we'll actually be able to preview what our sounds sound like in our scene. So if I tick true on this audio stream player, for example, As you can hear, um, the sound starts playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick true on playing for all of these audio stream players in the scene. And then what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to pay attention to the uh, audio buses here and how I'm changing the volume and stuff like that. So then you guys can actually uh, hear each sound's volume changing depending on which audio bus I'm changing. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So as you guys could just hear, as I was uh, changing each audio bus's volume, you could hear the correct sounds changing depending on which audio bus volume I was changing. So yeah. And also as well, um, when the audio is turned up, you can actually uh, see the visualization of the sounds as well. For example, if I turn up the music volume. <laughs> You can actually see the uh, volume being visualized on here on like this uh, visualizer, I guess you could call it, of some sorts. So uh, yeah. So if I actually uh, start playing these sounds again, so I will start playing them again. And then if I um, turn up their volumes and then I actually play around with the master volume, you'll be able to notice that all of the sound volumes change when I play around with the master volume. So I will show you guys that as an example. So as you can see, when I play around with the master volume, I just turned it all the way down just then. Uh, now all of the sounds are muted, even though they're all turned up here, as you can see. But because I've changed the master volume, that's decreased the volume of all these. So if you're wondering why when we change the master audio bus's volume, it then changes the other audio bus volumes as well, it's because the master audio bus is the main audio bus in our project. The master audio bus controls all the other volume in our scene. So let's say for example you're playing a game, right? And usually it might have options like your master volume, your sound effects, your dialogue and your music. Whenever you change the master volume, it will change all the other volume as well. So yeah. And also as well with the audio buses as well, um, if you want to like just straight up mute anything, there's like just a little mute button here. There's, you know, a bunch of different stuff you can play around with when it comes to the audio buses. The final thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the audio buses today is effects, since you can actually add effects in Godot. So let's say, for example, you want to add some reverb to a certain sound or something like that, right? Usually what I do with a lot of my games is usually I'll just add reverb in an audio editor like Audacity, for example, like if I want sounds to be more echoey. But um, you don't actually have to do that if you don't want to, since Godot actually has audio effects of its own. So if I go to the master bus, for example, and I go add effect, as you can see, there is a bunch of different effects here. We've got an amplifier effect, 
you know, distortion, reverb, that sort of stuff. So if you want to play around with any of these effects, be sure to. So uh, yeah, so if I go add the reverb effect, for example, to the uh, master volume, I mean to the master audio bus, and then I play a sound, for example, this sound will now have reverb. So now this sound actually has reverb, so I will uh, try that out again. So yeah, as you guys could just see just then, as I was turning off and on the reverb effect, you could actually hear the sound changing from being reverbed to not being reverbed. So yeah, uh, audio buses in Godot overall, um, to end off this tutorial, are pretty good. They're simple to use, there's a bunch of effects you can use, and uh, yeah. So just to conclude things off in this tutorial here, all audio buses are, is they are a way for you to categorize your sounds in Godot. So if you want to just change the volumes of certain sounds compared to others, then you can. So if you just want to change your dialogue volume, you can do that by having your dialogue all separated in a dialogue audio bus. And then you can do the same thing for your music and for your sound effects as well. So yeah. Sorry if you guys can hear any um, audio in the background as well, my brother's just being all crazy right now, um, I don't know why, but yeah. Um, anyways, I'll be sure to see you all in the next one, Bye bye